So now that I've been wearing these sneakers for a couple of weeks and this Senna helmet for probably over a month, I'm going to give you an update and let you know some long-term test results. This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Today I'm going to update you on a couple of products that I've reviewed recently. One of those is the Chronox motorcycle sneakers. And I've worn these uh, the last four or five times I've ridden the bike. And I just want to give you a little update on what I think of these. First of all, in my initial first impression review, I basically told you that the, they, they felt like they're a little bit large for me, um, not very comfortable, but I was able to replace the insoles that came in the boots, which are basically just a little thin piece of nothingness. And I bought these on Amazon. I think they're, I don't know, 10 or $12. They're not very expensive. And they're a memory foam insole and they're actually thicker. They have more padding at the bottom and they're much, much more comfortable. They really did improve the comfort of the sneaker or this little mini boot. It's kind of like a little boot, I guess. Uh, but I put those in there. I took out the one that came in the, in the sneaker and that made a huge difference. Much more comfortable and they also fit better. Now, I think it added just enough additional uh, padding or whatever to where they now fit my foot almost almost perfectly. They're still not super comfortable, I wouldn't say that, but they do seem to be breaking in a little bit more and they're not quite as stiff as they were when they first came in. I'll tell you what I don't like. Number one, I don't care for laces because I'm not going to lace up my boots every time I put them on. And I do like the fact that they give you this zipper on the side. And you can see the little zipper here on the inside of the, of the sneaker. I always want to call it a boot for some reason. Uh, basically, I can just leave the laces tied up, not loose, but not super tight. Slip the boot on, zip it up, and it's ready to go. It also has this little Velcro strap around the top that connects, you know, hooks onto some Velcro on the other side. The problem with it is the lace always gets in the way and it gets stuck to the Velcro. Or the Velcro, uh, after you seal it up, if you cross your legs or uncross your legs, it gets caught and it comes off and then you end up with this thing flopping around. I'm not sure this little flap really does much anyway. So I'm considering just cutting that off because to me it's just an annoyance. It's one more thing I have to deal with. I'd rather be, be able to just slip the boot on, zip it up, and be done with it. And uh, somebody somewhere is going to come out with a boot that doesn't even have the laces or any of this crap and they'll just have the zipper on the side and we'll be done. Anyway, uh, I am still wearing them. They actually do have some reflective piping. I think this, this silver piece here, I have the black and gray, and I believe this is somewhat reflective. So I think I mentioned earlier it didn't have that, but I think it actually does. Now, one thing that I've noticed that is a little disappointing is the sole. I did test this on some wet pavement and it's very slippery. Uh, in fact, my foot almost slipped out from under me uh, as I was trying to, you know, back the motorcycle up on some wet uh, concrete. And so they're, they are not very sticky on wet pavement. I've had that problem with almost every pair of boots I've owned, every pair of motorcycle riding boots. If you've got a pair of riding boots that seems to be have good traction in on wet pavement, let me know because on my Tour Master boots, I've come to intersections, put my foot down, and almost dropped the bike because my foot slides, and it's very, <laughs> it gets your attention in a hurry. So that's an update on the Chronox sneakers. And I'll put a link in the description of the video for the sneakers and for these insoles if you're interested. Okay, let's get to the Senna Impulse helmet. 
for the last oh couple of months, this since I got it in, this has been my go-to helmet. I've been, as many of you may know if you watch my videos, uh, I like HJC helmets. I've been wearing HJC for quite some time. I have them rigged up with my GoPro so I can use my uh, my GoPro cameras to do my motor vlogs with them. But about the time I started using this Cine helmet. I also got my Insta360 camera, and I've been using it more for my motor vlogs. So uh, I can use the Cine helmet, and I don't have to have the GoPro mounted anywhere. I didn't want to. This is an expensive helmet, like six, seven hundred dollars. I didn't want to really jack it up, you know, with a GoPro mount and all that. So I've been leaving it kind of uh, pristine, you might say. But what do I think of this helmet long term now that I've used it for quite some time? Now, I will be honest, I have not done a road trip with it yet where I've worn it for like six hours straight. I will be doing one soon, uh, but it's it. I haven't had, I, you know, the weather hasn't allowed me to do any road trips, but I will be doing one probably next month and I'll report back those results. OK, let me tell you first what I don't like. Uh, because I want to get the negative out of the way first, and then I'll come back and tell you really what I like about the helmet. And we'll end on a little bit of a positive note. First of all, uh, the one thing I'm not crazy about, it, and it's really, there's really two things. And that the controls for the audio unit on the side over here are a little bit clumsy when you have gloves on. I can, I can manage them with my bare hands, but when I'm wearing gloves, it's hard for me to know where I'm pressing. So I think Senna could have done a little bit better job with these controls on the side. They work well. It's just, it's hard for me to know how to like find volume up and down. There's, there's like four different buttons here. And they did, they did try to elevate the, the plus and the minus button, the up volume, down volume button. I don't know, maybe it's just me. If you have an impulse helmet, let me know if you struggle with that too with gloves on. I usually end up just taking my gloves off to do whatever I need to do on the helmet. And you shouldn't have to do that. The other thing that I really don't like, it's the worst feature of the helmet in my opinion, is where they put the, the little recharge port for the battery. And this is where you recharge your communicator battery. And they put it at the back on the bottom of the helmet. They send you this little adapter that plugs into a USB-C cable. And then this is a magnetic plug that snaps onto the underside of the helmet. The problem is it's not a very strong magnet, so it pops off very easily. So once it's on, uh, it will begin you will see a light over here on the on the little button panel. There is a light to let you know it's charging, which is good, thank goodness. Otherwise, you wouldn't know if you had a good connection. The problem is I have to lay the helmet on its side to charge it because if you have it up like this, obviously, the port is hidden. If you hang it off the edge of a table, uh, it's very hard to see to get that to get that clipped in place, to get it snapped in place. You can't really tell where it is. It's just not a good design. This is designed by somebody that never rides with a helmet, doesn't use it on a daily basis. Also, this little adapter, I mean, this is USB-C. This is standard equipment, standard issue. Everybody has that. But you have to have this little mag clip to charge your helmet. And they do put a little thing on here where you could keep it on your keychain or save it somewhere. I guarantee I'm going to lose this thing. I guarantee you I will lose this. And I haven't looked on the Senna website to see if they sell these uh, additional little magnetic adapters because I guarantee you that's going to get lost. Now. What's the solution? Well, if Senna is listening, if your engineers are listening, just give us a USB-C connector to charge this battery. 
and better yet, put it on the side of the helmet. And the reason is because when I come home, I usually hang my helmet up on the wall on a hook. Well, there's no way to charge the battery with it on the hook because when I hang it up, the connector is butted up against the wall. So there's no way to get to the thing to charge it. I have to take it off the hook, lay it on its side, uh, which, you know, you run the risk of scratching the helmet. So I have to put a towel down. Now, I know somebody's going to say, get one of those little donuts. Well, that's another 25 bucks I got to spend. I shouldn't have to do that. It's just not, uh, not that part of it's not well designed. So I don't like this charging system. I wish it was just a USB. Even if it was on the underside of the helmet and it was USB-C, I'd be okay with it. Because then I could just plug it in, hang it on the on the wall. If it wasn't this magnetic thing, it'd be fine. Anyway, tell me if I'm crazy. Do any of you have an, a Senna Impulse helmet and are you having that same issue? Okay, let me tell you what I do like about the helmet because right now it's still my favorite helmet in spite of these issues, which are minor. I love the face shield. I love the fact that it's very, very solid. You can close it with one hand. It's got a nice a uh, large tab here for you, easy to find with your glove to close and lock it. And it locks very securely. I love the air vents and how they work. They're fine, no problems with that. Uh, the chin bar, I like it, it raises up. The helmet itself has a much lower profile than my HJC helmet. Now what I mean by that is apparently the distance between the bottom of the helmet and the top of the helmet is shorter. I don't know if that's just because of the way they've angled the, the base of the helmet or what they did. In other words, this helmet would fit in my 2018 trunk without having to obviously remove anything. I don't have anything mounted to it. But all I had to do was open the face shield. If you open the face shield just like that, the trunk would close fine. If the face shield was closed, that front edge of that face shield would raise the helmet up just enough to where the trunk wouldn't close. But as long as you open the face shield, it would close. Uh, HJC, it won't do that. So the profile of the HJC helmet is a little bit just tall enough to where it would not fit in that 2018 trunk. The other thing I love about this helmet is they did attempt uh, to give it a, a little light back here on the back. It's kind of a little, it's, it's, just, a, it's just a light. Uh, and it's not as good as the brake free that I have on my HJC helmet. And I, I plan to add the brake free light to this helmet once brake free comes out with the white model or they get more of them in stock. They've, they've said they were going to send me one. I hope it fits the shape of the back of this helmet. I kind of hate to cover up that Senna because that's kind of cool looking. I think it's a beautiful helmet. I really like the profile of it. I like the look of it. Uh, it just feels like a better quality helmet than my HJC. It just It's just a better product. Uh, it feels safer when you have it on. It fits very well, fits secure. And I also love the little latching mechanism uh, for the chin strap. I like that it has that built in. I didn't have to add it. And another thing I love about this helmet is the sound quality is incredible. The headset and the speakers, uh, as I've mentioned to you before, on my Cine. 50S, which is mounted to my HJC helmet, I have to turn the volume on my Goldwing up to say 12 or 13 to listen to radio the way I like to listen to it. Uh, but this helmet, and I always keep the headsets just all the volume all the way up, and I adjust the volume from the motorcycle. On this helmet, I have the volume all the way up, and I never have to get past seven or eight on the Goldwing volume setting. So it has more volume that could possibly be because the helmet's fitting a little tighter. Maybe the speakers are a little closer to my ear. I'm not sure, but the, the sound quality is really, really good with this helmet. It's very comfortable, has a, has a very comfortable, soft, uh, cushy interior. 
like I said before, it, it you can tell it's just a better quality product. It, I mean, obviously HJC makes a good helmet, but I have the cheaper end, the IS Max 2, which they don't even make anymore, but it was probably a $200 helmet. This is like a $700 helmet. It also doesn't affect me right now, but it also has a very cool feature uh, for sunglasses. If you wear sunglasses, uh, it has a little uh, place here on the side of the interior for your uh, ear earpieces on your sunglasses to slip through. So that's that's kind of nice. I think they there's a lot of thought went into this helmet. It's their top of the line, and um, I I just really like it. I'll also put a link to the Sunna website where. If you're interested, you can get more information on this helmet. And they also give you the pin lock shield with the helmet when you buy it in a nice little carrying case. So very impressed with it. It's just a good helmet. I'm anxious to see how it performs in the summer uh, with heat because I it's been cold ever since I got the helmet. I really haven't worn it in hot temperature yet. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that and report back to you on that. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Reviews.